going on guys? I just want to put a video together showing kind of the whole build of this hot rod. Uh, right from square one, so obviously it was a four-door hard top and we chopped it all up and turned it into a two-door convertible. It's currently just a roadster, but uh, I just want to thank every one of you guys that watched all the videos. I know watching the ads is a pain and, and all that sort of stuff. If you, if you donated, if you subscribed to the channel, if you remember all those things, uh, this is your car because uh, I wouldn't have been able to afford to waste money like this if it wasn't for you guys watching. So thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're new here, watch the video, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I don't know what we're working on next, but it should be a good one. All right, guys, let's get after it. Look at this piece of junk, eh? Don't talk about yourself that way. Just talking about this hot rod. What's happening under there? Well, there is no spring. Oh no, it's just broken, yeah. Um, hmm. Why'd you make me buy this? I didn't make you do nothing. That's all you. And your smart ideas. I think it's B. Right, This thing is garbage. What's that? Nothing. Okay, so I got the car kind of dismantled. Uh, they didn't tell me any of that. Seats are out. They were uh, pre rusted, so they're ready to pop right out. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, I'm missing one piece of window trim, which the guy said he was going to give me, so maybe it's in the trunk or I got to look for it. But uh, that's about it. There's a bunch of other miscellaneous headlight doors and bezels and taillights, all sorts of stuff in there. The floors uh, are a little, a little rough. So I, I got a one piece floor coming like always, but uh, this would need a front pan, a middle pan and a back pan on this side and a front and a middle there at a hundred bucks each or 500 bucks plus all the bracing and all the screw around factor. It ain't worth your time. Uh, we got the steering box all dealt, to get, uh, dealt together. So that's good. Just look at how these uh, posts are. So they attach the rocker. Then they have one, oh, me go around the back there. So right here. This piece right here, it actually goes right into the floor for strength, but uh, she's a little, a little wobbly, which I guess is pretty common. So my thought is I'll take the front door off, take the back door off, I'll take the post out. And then I got some pretty thick, I don't know what it is, maybe 16 gauge or something like that, or even eighth. Uh, I'm gonna weld a plate on top of the rocker. And then I can kind of put the post on that so you know it'll be a nice solid place to be. For when I put the two door on, and then I can make this all kind of fit, and then I can change the rocker down the road. I've ordered rockers. But I want to see what it's gonna look like, so I'll make a two door, make the you know back door into a, into a skin, make that all all work. So we still have a lot to do on the, the wheel well on the other side. Get it nice and sturdy. At that point, I can then brace the post to the center of the floor because the, the tunnel's got lots of strength in it. So I can do a brace across and a brace back to the wheel tub. So the post won't go anywhere. And the door will be good. That'll be good. Do that on both sides. Then I'll move on to taking the roof off and seeing what it's going to look like. I've priced out some panels. So like the convertible had a different panel in the back here. In the back here, camera one. So it really just goes in the package tree. You could probably make something work, but uh, we'll see. I might, it's like 150 bucks or something. So I might do that. Get that all taken care of. Uh, so it'll look like a convertible. If at that point I'm happy with it, which hopefully I am, I have the other chassis that was a convertible chassis uh, located. So I just got to buy that and it'll do a whole body swap, at which point, I mean, brace the hell out of it, make sure it's nice and strong. Rebuild that frame with all new, you know, front end bushings, control arms, all that sort of stuff. Then we can swap it over, put a new floor and rockers in at that point. And that's the point. You know, it's uh, a lot of people are unhappy tearing up a four door hardtop. So be it. 
I told everybody in the comments they want to buy it. I'd sell it to them for all I had in it, but no one contacted me, so here she goes. I hate the roof line of the four doors. I think they're so ugly. I don't know, some people love them. This car would need, I mean, it was a parts car, let's be honest, it was a parts car for 20 years ago I had it. It would need so much work to bring back to being a driver and remain as a four door. I just don't see it worth the, worth the money. I mean, I pay a thousand bucks, you put a thousand dollar floor into it, you have to redo the rockers, all the doors, no motor, no trans, all the whole drive line sitting in the ground, it's all pooped. It needs all the rear suspension done because the leaves are broken. The trunk floor is rotted at the back. Uh, I'll show you that in another video, I guess. Plus, I mean, look at all the stuff that's missing. I mean, it's been parted out. The bumpers are hashed, you know, the brake lights, and, you know, the trim, all these little things. Then the paint, then the interior, door panels, it's missing all the regulators, half the glass. I don't know, I mean, around here, there was a guy trying to sell a four-door, a nice four-door hardtop for 10 grand, and it was for years he tried to sell it. So I don't know, I mean, what, what's a nice four-door hardtop worth? Eight, 10,000 bucks? I think you have more than that in it to bring this one back to life as opposed to me kind of butchering it, just having fun with it. And ultimately getting it back on the road, and that's the goal. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to continue on the next video right away, because I do want to start fitting some doors on that. i got to see those doors I have, make sure they'll, they're all good and everything. Another guy has another set of doors, see what we got for trim. But I want to get that braced up in the next couple days, and I want the roof off of this thing. Let's see what it looks like. I really hope it looks more like a 57 Chevy convertible, versus I cut the roof off a 57 four-door hard dump. Same but different. But want to look cool, want to look shitty. So that's the plan. Let me know how dumb I am in the comments, but uh, I'm sure most of you would be nice and positive and nothing but good things to say about how I'm rescuing this fine hot rod. And uh, we'll get chopping. See you in the next video. All right, well, it's chopping time. So we start off the video. Dan here, GSP Chop. We start off the video by uh, ripping a set of doors off. Pretty simple process so far. Uh, no different than doing a four door to two door and a sedan uh, conversion at this point. We take the doors off. We have our replacement doors and this is just a shell I, I picked up. I have two of them and I found a guy with other doors so these might just be temporary. This is some kind of fairly thick uh, plate that I've been having for a while. I'm use this a little bit of structure. Anyways, this is all kind of new to me and I haven't seen anybody doing the internet yet so it's kind of really new to me. Well, I've seen it, but I haven't seen anybody like a how-to. So, I'm thinking we're going to do the same situation. The post is just going to move back. The door will be hung. And then we'll be using the uh, the post of structure to make our, our quarter pound. Now, it's a bit of a goofy kind of shape. I don't know what's going to happen in here. That's definitely a little uh, nerve-wracking, but we'll figure it out. And ultimately, i got to take a lot of this stuff off to kind of get in there. Anyways. We're not focused on that just yet, we'll, we'll play that one by ear. This is the post. Now the post, it's got some wiggle to it. Now the way it works, it attaches to the, uh, to the rocker, just like any other thing would. But it has this kind of brace, which goes over into the floor. And as you can see where it's kind of bracing is, well there isn't a whole lot left to it anymore. So it's got some flex to it, and the back door was hanging out, you had to lift it to kind of latch it. So... I cleaned up a little bit back, well I just took this little plate off, and it's actually fairly solid here, and the floor is nice and solid here, so I think what's going to happen, I'm going to cut this whole section out, uh, we're going to move it back, in the meantime I think that's where I'll plate this, it might just be some sheet metal, if you use anything that thick, I might use the thick stuff on the rocker, just to keep it, because there's, uh, well there's nothing down here, it's nobody home, and really we do need some strength, but I also look at, I mean the fact that it has this much strength in it uh, with not a lot of structure. And we're just kind of test fit and everything. This may have to come apart again, I'm not too sure. I want to get the doors on it, get the quarter skin kind of tacked, or the door, whatever you want to call it, tacked. Once everything fits, before I cut the roof off, because we're doing a convertible, like it or hate it, I think there'll be a lot of bracing going on in this situation. A lot of bracing from here to there, you know, into the tunnel, whatever it has to be. Might even weld the door shut or put a bar in there. Do something. Because uh, I do think the roof coming off is going to be something, for sure. And I don't want this thing to all kind of fold up like a pretzel. But, we're going to keep giving her. So I'm going to look at the other side see what it looks like. Uh, the nice thing about these, I mean, in all reality, this is probably less stress on the body than it was because there's no doors hanging off anything. There's uh, These hardtops are quite a, 
Quit the unit. Man, these things got hit on the side. Uh, I don't know how much I trust that, I tell you. Nice post top to bottom probably really spreads the load out quite a bit. These are, well, there's something. Anyways, I'm going to get uh, cutting this out. And we'll see what's going to look back here. It should be a fun time. I'm excited. Well, we're making progress, I think. At the very least, I know how it comes apart. So we've got the door hung. I think it's still, it's hard to tell. Like it fits good there, but this doesn't, but this kind of moves. <laughs> I don't know, we'll wing it there. Um, let's hit the fender. There we are. So the way this fits, pretty simple. It fits along the rocker just like usual and this little outrigger goes into the floor. I don't know if I had a little divot, if maybe you cut through. There was nothing left underneath, like if it was double wall. But, I mean, it's clearly rotted out, so I don't know if you're supposed to kind of cut it out. It sits flush, it goes from there, but the post is back. Now, the issue we're going to run into, the door it wants to hit all of this stuff because the back of the door is a different shape on the four door and two door. So, I think this section here might have to go, and then we'll fill it in or do whatever down the road, but that's, that's that. This is a pretty, pretty, uh, hefty piece of goods. So now what I'm thinking, I'm going to run some of that thick steel under and under, weld that. I'm then going to get just some thin, I think I got 18 gauge or 19 gauge or something like that. I'm just going to literally put a piece over it and brrr, weld it in just as an ugly patch, but then it'll have its strength back because this is literally all that, <laughs> that's in the rocker. There's nothing there. It's all rotted away. So I think that's the plan. That way we'll have lots of strength across there. That'll all be good. This line will stay the same. I might even weld something uh, front to back on the side just uh, to keep the shape as much as we possibly can while we're getting everything set up. But yeah. That's where we're going. Anyways, it's getting dark. I'm tired. The GoPro battery's dead. All my batteries are dead in the grinders, so I think it's time to call it. I actually just finished the last video, which hopefully you've already watched. If you haven't, go back and watch it. Do me a favor. Gentle. But uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. I'm thinking tomorrow, I'll get all that welded in, get it strengthened up. We'll mount the post. I think I have a latch and stuff. It'd be nice to get a latch on there so we can latch it to the door. Where's piece? I'm sure I could take it off. That one. Latch it, have that going, and then I'd like to just kind of get the the quarter piece tacked in. I think I would add a lot more strength to it. But I don't know, we're getting somewhere. I mean it's uh we're on our way to a two-door hard top, other than it has an ugly roof. It's too bad that the four doors and two doors didn't share the same roof line like the sedans do. Because then you can make hard tops. That door sure is a lot longer. It's got a kind of a different shape to it. The hard tops are very different than the sedans. So yeah, it's funny, it's Mer stopped by. And it's funny because I told him it felt like the first time I chopped up my 55. I really didn't know what I was doing. I'd done some research. I bought the cars, I bought the panels or whatever I thought I was gonna need. And I started cutting. I was very nervous, but you know, it turned out okay, I guess. And now I'm on my third sedan for myself now, doing this Black Widow. So it takes me back to a couple years ago when this is all brand new, which is exciting. 
doing the same thing over and over again, putting in floors, putting on quarters, doing all those things. I mean, replacing a floor, a quarter panel, or fender, or doing a motor swap, doesn't matter, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, same principles. Chopping doors out, making them in this hard tops, convertibles, all that, that's, that's unique. I enjoy it. It's new. Anyways, that's it for me tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. I've jumped ahead. That's the inner structure of the door. I've chopped a little part. You ready for it? But bam, that's what it looks like. So it's too long. Uh, obviously, I got to trim it around the post. But it makes me feel better. I was worried because this section here before the V is very short on a hard topic convertible. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out. But obviously, it looks not bad. So that's cool. My next step, what I'm going to do door gentle I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cut this piece up and just have it kind of follow the contour of the door obviously it's a bit of a different shape or whatever the deal is so cut that make it fit the door a little better bring it back there forward there just be able to hammer it actually so it does stick out a little bit past uh, get that close because that's what I want to ultimately butt this up to and then I can put a couple of tack holes on the back side and I can kind of zip this in and just literally ugly, ugly tack it. This is all just going to be tacked together because if it all come apart, so be it. I just want to make sure it's all going to fit. Before I take the roof off, I can brace the hell out of, like, take the back seat out and brace it kind of front to back and everything. I can't see it just folding in half or doing a whole lot of movement. I mean, it's a full frame car. Fenders are on it. The quarters and all that are on it. So... I agree if you chop the roof off and you drove down the road, you probably have some problems. But sitting in the garage, I'm not overly concerned about it. So, at least that's my plan, that's my thoughts. Uh, it's probably all wrong, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, really, at this point, this side and that side done pretty quick. And I'll be able to take the roof off. I bet I'll be ready to go, and I won't have parts yet, which is going to be a pain. So it's going to be a bit of a ratty looking uh, four-door, two-door door roof with no parts. But, what are you going to do? That's what it is. So I'll... Uh, yeah, I'll start trimming a little bit and kind of hammering and dolling this over. Should go pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, before you know it, there'll be a hard top on one side with the ugly roof line. Okay, so, we have a lot of laps in there, but uh, I got all the trim off. I got the outer... This was a pain to take off this stuff, but hopefully it'll net me dollars. Uh, so that's all off, ready to go. I, uh, I'll walk into this thing and start pointing through, but I took the doors off and I took the post out. I put a piece of angle iron across the rockers for some support, and then I just welded some kind of miscellaneous things in here. I don't think it's going to collapse, but this is just good to do, I guess. I was going to do the door and the whole mess, but I don't want to do that. I want to take the roof off. Ouch. Um, you okay? Oh yeah, it's just a little tetanus. I got the back glass out. It actually looks like it would be like a cool like speed racer front glass. That yeah, it does look neat like that. I don't know if that's worth any money or not, but I got it out. So that's a win. So are you saying if anyone needs back glass and they're local? Yeah. Maybe you want to pay up. <laughs> if you'd like to pay a thousand dollars for it in case this all goes sideways. So we got quarter piece on. Uh, so I'm going to do the bottom anyways. We've got rockers and all that stuff coming. But I want to see what this thing's going to look like as a verbal so that's where we're leaving this video i'm not gonna lie the next video is immediately starting right now now we're cutting the roof off uh see you in the next video you're gonna want to see it
Uh, the camera actually overheated, so I had to take a light intermission. And now it's dark out. And now it's dark out. Um, I got most of this cut to about there, so I'm sure you'll do the last zip. It'll fall on itself, be a pain. Jam up the sawzall. But uh, I kind of mean, nothing just went twang, so it didn't pull in on itself yet, anyways. The two door was so rotted, the frame was rotted, it was the firewall was rotted. It was the rod, most rotted car that uses a parts car to do the the gray 55. I cut the roof off that one. I probably used it all, but I, I used that metal for years. It's stuck right here. in pretty good shape. Yeah, probably bolt right in here. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what we did here, but it's something I gotta stand back. That's a convertible right there. You're in a shot. No, I'm not. I've got the camera. Yeah? Yeah, that's, uh... Alright, well... I know we just started the video, but I've been giving her all day. And, uh... That's her ending. I'm gonna bask in my glory here. Maybe I'll paint this silver so it looks like it's stainless. And it's more... That hole looks very big without a door in it. Hey, your car doesn't have a roof. Yeah, roaster, baby. We're basically chip boost. This is an episode of overhauling. It's actually not that bad. It's gonna... Chip boost, if you're watching, please help. <laughs> I'm sure he watches every episode. Yeah, I'm sure he's a big fan. <laughs> Me, Foose, and Bezos. <laughs> yeah, the ultimate trio. See you tomorrow. All right, so I thought I'd show you all the post I was doing, all sorts of boringness, and then you know what showed up was the chassis. So this... Paid up a little bit, grand. What are you gonna do? So, clear as day, this is the difference. It has this ginormous uh, X brace in it, which they do sell this X brace. You can buy it for say, 800 bucks American or something like that. So, by the time I get it here, it's like $1,200. So, didn't want to deal with that. This is like a factory original 1957 convertible chassis, has all the steering, has all the front end, which is Nice to have. It's actually in good shape. I mean, it needs all rebuilt, obviously, with all the control arms and all that stuff over there, which I will absolutely reuse. And it's got a good set of usable leaf springs. They're in good shape. Uh, obviously, needs new bushings, kind of front and back, but that's no big deal. Heat those up, push them out, put new ones in, and we're set. Convertible also has extra body mounts right there, I believe, or, or unique. Uh, I think all the rest are all the same. So that'd be nice. This one hasn't been molested. It's all original stuff. Steering box is good. Um, we're not going to use, obviously, 
any of the steering shaft. I'll put a proper column in it. I'll probably peel this stuff off, put it in storage, because uh, I have that front end from the 56, the sedan that I got to keep. So it's got disc brakes, all new control arm bushings, all new ball joints, all new tie rods, all new, 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 new. So I think what I'll probably do is finish up this post and I'll get the quarter panel tacked on. I'll have to do that tonight. I might have to finish by tomorrow. I got sidetrack started late and then this happened and all sorts of things. But it'll probably be finished that. It'll look like a convertible. We're then waiting on sheet metal. While we're waiting on sheet metal, we'll start a new video where we uh, change the whole front end. I've already ordered all the bushings for the back. We'll get that all dialed together. Clean up the frame. I think I might actually paint this one. Like uh, some KBS or POR or whatever it is there get that all taken care of and I mean really I could even plumb the brakes I could do a bunch of stuff like that or whatever my only thing that is oh, a concern or I'm not really too sure so this is where the back of the motor would be and the, and the transmission would mount to it typically right about here ish is where I put a transmission cross member so I mean obviously people don't fall through a little googling I don't know if they have to open this up a little bit or if you put the, uh, the cross member just to this little brace here and make something up but either way like this is this is beef i guess it's crazy it was one right here it's been torched out it's a little bit bigger than on that side this is for the exhaust to go through so there's a few tricky things to have to kind of deal with i'm going to slice these ears off because i'm not a big believer in them and we'll deal with the exhaust there and i guess it must go through back there so i don't know how much that we're all going to end up using what i'm going to figure out but I do think this adds, um, I mean, it's a convertible. It has a convertible chassis, so it's going to have lots of strength in it. I can weld in one more uh, mount, because what I'll probably do is when this chassis comes out, I'll have a couple of spares, right? So we can do that, drill a hole, mount it in. So it'll be just as strong. We'll have all the posts in there. we got all the factory sheet metal. Other than windshield, I mean, this thing will be a convertible. The VIN number won't say it. Don't I understand that. Don't get me wrong. But... Uh, Makes me feel better, safer, all those sort of things. And instead of, I was going to put some sort of uh, brace in, but, uh, eh, be kind of buckshee hash it together. Just be nice, factory, original. Adds to the value, right? Adds to my dream. So yeah, we'll just change, change, change. Just keep rolling the money here. But uh, even with everything in a new floor and all the rust, I think with all the rust taken care of, the price of the car, the extra sheet metal, and that will be about 4000 bucks. So, I don't know. Get you a rust-free convertible for four thousand dollars. This start off as a four-door beater. Oh, story of my life here. So I was skiing the door. Mur came by. I talked to my parents for a bit. Then a neighbor came by. Now it's dark out. So anyways, got the door skinned. I trimmed just the edge off, just so because uh, that's where all the latch and all that junk would be. This way, it kind of you know fits over, it laps over. Uh, we put it on the inside. We mark it. That'll be on the back side of where we're going to be welding. So just gives you an idea. You add, you know half inch or so so i'll peel this back off i love it. i just tack welds it and cut it off a bazillion times i'm not overly concerned about the the paint work there so we'll uh we'll do that i'll zap it or get it cut i'll fit it one more time and then i actually have the door welded to the post right now i don't have any latching mechanism on this one so i'm happy with where it is so i then just welded the post in with another it's a like octopus of miscellaneous but at least that's where it's going to be. I'm happy with the door fitment. I'll be happy with the quarter panel fitment. So I'll cut the door, untack it, open it, put this in, kind of tack it, and then I can just run the zip cut down, give it, well, I don't even know what I did there, 10 tacks, that's it. And the same thing around here. This one's actually much nicer. On the other side, this whole uh, front of the fender or what, wheel lip was uh, cut out. Obviously, being a parts car, someone had scabbed that. So at least this, I mean, we're... We're pretty much lined up. These doors fit really nice. It's actually really easy fitting the hardtop doors versus sedan doors. Because uh, the sedan has all that bullshit up here you got to take care of. This is such a simple panel. I mean, honestly, I couldn't imagine putting a, a convertible panel on if you have a good door and all that. I mean, it's the same amount of welding. I don't know. I think it looks good. So, yeah, I'll get this trimmed up. I'll get, well, I'll get that trimmed up, then we'll just buzz it in, and then we're ending it for this video tonight, and then tomorrow, chassising.
on guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So, front five Chevys. So, I mean, we're gonna be back to working on this uh, 57 Chevy convertible. Um, unfortunately, I'm held up on parts. Um, looks gonna be a few more days. I got floor coming, we got rockers coming. We got all the sheet metal on the back here to make it a proper convertible. I mean, obviously right now it's just a four-door sedan so you know, turn into a two-door and have the roof cut off. But uh, anyways, it's got the appearance, it has me motivated. Uh, a couple days ago, I picked up this frame, which is a factory 57 Chevy convertible frame. Now, I didn't do a whole lot of filming on it, but I did do some, some work on it. Um, I had to replace a, a, some part of the back of the frame there. It's got a little stiffener, and it had rotted out, unfortunately. It's kind of stupid, so I didn't know they had them. So it's got this big X brace, which obviously convertible, and it's got this little brace on the bottom, which, uh, like, the frame stops there, and that's added on. Which is just like a little U section of, I don't know what it would be, 16 gauge or something like that. Anyways, there's holes in it for draining, and there's holes in the in the frame to drain, because it gets all full of junk. As you can see, my driveway was clean. I kind of cleaned, tried to clean the frame out. Anyways, the holes didn't match, so we put a bunch of junk in there, rotted it out, destroyed my life. Um, I knew it had a broken pin on the back here, so that the rear end is kind of pulled in. Unfortunately, I was looking around, I saw on this side the little pedestal and actually the spring is broken, which is lame. I didn't know that. So, whatever. But I did paint it up, got it all detailed, it's all just flat black, uh, you know, trim clad El Cheapo stuff. I ripped the front suspension off. This is the stuff I had put on that 56 and the guy didn't want, so I took it all off. So it's got all brand new control arm bushings, uh, ball joints, steering components, the whole deal. Disc brakes. Uh, still, this is how you do them. You just put a piece of all fit rod and you collapse all together. But look at that. It's all brand new. So this is basically done. I got to finish cutting off the ears uh, for the transmission mount. But then I think what we're going to do is try and get this under this. I did pick up some uh, one by one square tube. I got a few ideas. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to move everything out of the way. I'm actually going to push this out, get it all cleaned up, wash it all down, get it kind of ready to go. Um, so the fear is the thing's going to kind of fold in half like a bit of a tin can. Now if the door's on, uh, you know, I'll put a couple of tack welds just to hold it all. That'll be pretty good. It has the tunnel in it, which gives it a lot of strength. I think what I might do though with that stuff, I'm going to weld from the tow board right to back here, just to be on the safe side to make sure this thing won't twist. Now underneath, uh, once we get it back in, I'll show you the passenger side spring has been ripped off and the frame is twisted where the hanger is, unfortunately. So it's kind of mangled up. The driver's side's still okay, so I'm thinking we might pillage that spring, put it on that other frame. I did get new bushings and all that for the Leafs anyways. Or, or new leaves next week, but I kind of like to stay a little cheap. It's already getting a little bit out of budget. It does look cool, though. Uh, so we got that. So I'll give it the strength there. Then I got to figure out how to lift this thing. Now, with the frame being destroyed in the back, uh, I think I'm just going to cut it at the kick. I'm going to cut the frame because I have no use for it whatsoever. So if I cut well with the leaf spring perch or whatever, cut it there. That section will come out. We'll support the body. At the front, once we have the front clip off, I mean, it'll just roll away keep the body where it's going to be now how i'm going to support the body had a few thoughts there i think i'm going to weld a bar across on the inside of the trunk uh one of those one by one and lift out the engine crane and then same at the front maybe across where the front mounts are i'm not too sure but a couple floor jacks maybe some four by four posts whatever we'll lift it up and then when the other frame comes in if I pull the rear wheels off and just put on some casters, which Murr has, it should be pretty low, so the body shouldn't have to be that tall. And with no front clip on, no motor or nothing in it, it'll just roll into place. Those are my thoughts. I would have liked to have changed the floor and the rockers and all that stuff, and then do it on the other chassis, but you know what? I'm out of parts, and I'm not going to stop working. So we'll get that all taken care of. Uh, probably next time you see this thing, the frame will be moved, the trucks will all be moved, and this will be out in the daylight. We can actually get some look at it and get a little look at it. And I can get some cool thumbnail pictures because I've been cramming the garage. I haven't been cleaning up. 
So that's the plan. It'll be a backyard hillbilly body fro uh, swap, chassis swap, whatever you want to call it, uh, in your garage. There's no excuses. If I can do it in this little crap hole, you guys can do it anywhere you want. Do it in the gravel parking lot. It's possible. Uh, until I'm in the hospital. Then maybe don't. This is not an instructional video. I'm not gonna lie, it is the next day. Yesterday kicked my ass uh, getting this uh, frame swapped out. So thanks Danny and Murr for hanging out and not uh, losing it, because I was. Anyways, we got it all together. I was screwing around just a little bit today. It's up on, up on stands. The one thing, which I don't know if it's different, because I mean, there is a different floor, I believe, for hard tops and stuff. I have a sedan floor coming. It's all I've ever done is sedan floors. But right now you can't get a hard top floor, so. Take what you can get. I'm actually getting a scratch and dent floor of all things. So we'll have to make it work. Right about here is where the uh, park brake mechanism is and it does hit that cross brace just a little. So I took it all off of this old uh, floor. So the new one going in, uh, I'll put it all together out the e-brake on, we'll have to deal with that after. But it seems to fit pretty good. Uh, we're sitting right on the, on the frame, obviously. So there's, there's no body bushings at the back. I did put two in the front. These are the two I always believe. So if you get these two lined up, and there's two at the back, which will get those lined up, the front and back of the car are in line with each other. The middle is you're going to figure it all out. Uh, I, we did break one tack weld. This top one here popped out when the car was kind of all up in the place and moving around. But uh, all I do is push it back and re weld it. I mean, the gap stayed pretty tight same as down there so i don't think it's too bad uh this door i welded shut and i never quite finished it so we can you know trim that but this you know body line down there remain the same that door still opens and closes uh the door might just be need to adjust just a small a bit there but realistically considering how this thing was up and moving around and twisting and all that are not too bad and i'm not really too concerned about it until we get the rockers tacked in and the floor set in at that point, and the you know, kind of fender set and all that, I think this whole car is going to have to be tacked together, make sure everything opens and closes and works, and then burn it together. It's a little sketchy for a bit there, but otherwise it worked out pretty good. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to clean up in here. I got so much junk I got to move. I got, I got to separate this leaf spring from this section of chassis, probably keep the rear end, at least the center section. Uh, throw the frame out. There's just junk everywhere. So I'm going to do a little bit of working on that. Then I think this thing could probably be dropped down. I'll push it out front, we'll put the front clip back on. It'll look how it looked before, other than it's got a full chassis under it, which is pretty sweet. So a lot of work can be done at home. Uh, maybe learn from my mistakes. I wouldn't do it the exact same way again, but uh, it worked. Engine crane and a couple of jack stands. Two floor jacks would have been nice, I think. If I had a floor jack on each side with a four by four running across and lifting it up, that would have been the ticket or two engine cranes. Or a hoist. But uh, I'm gonna get cleaning up and we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back, we'll roll this thing out, we'll put it all together and we'll end this video. It's burnt me out. What's going on guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. As always, we're working on a Tri-5. Uh, so this is the convertible. Convertible. Anyways, I got a pile of sheet metal. I was gonna show you real quick and then we'll start working on it. It was an expensive day. So I just want to take a minute and thank everyone here who does watch and watches the ads, and comments, and subscribes to the channel. If you haven't, do that. It makes a huge difference for me. Uh, it'll, it affords me to do make terrible decisions like this. Why, why put it in the savings account when you can buy ridiculous sheet metal at inflated American pricing uh, and then pay the shipping on it? That's just as much fun, right? So thanks again for that. Anyways, here's what we got going on. So we got uh, two rockers. 
These are pricey, they're a couple hundred bucks a piece. Uh, I'll talk Canadian dollars, so I don't know what's 150 or so American. Anyway, so we got rockers for both sides. They're four door rockers, so they're full length. Um, this was the stuff that was kind of important for the actual convertible conversion. Uh, this section right here, it's quite short on the four door hardtop. Obviously, the sedans are the same. Uh, I don't, I guess maybe a two door hardtop's longer. I'm, I don't know, maybe that's convertible only. I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. Some guys on the internet were saying they've done this and they've just used the deck lid, skinned it, and then used it to extend it, which is fine. That would probably work. Gives it a bit of a shape. This is the proper panel, which then kind of puts everything in line for these side panels. These side panels were a bit of a kick in the teeth because all I really needed was kind of from here ahead. But in actuality, this isn't... The panel isn't meant to be used as a convertible conversion. It's meant to be a quarter panel repair. So I guess the, when I was talking to the guys at uh, Cars, um, they were saying the quarter panel used to be kind of one piece and then it would flip over and go right into the, the trunk area, which may still exist, but now it joins right in the center. Uh, under this trim, it's actually quite ugly. There's, it's just like a seam and it's, well, it's kind of just like that. So it's nothing special. So essentially they kind of sell the quarter panel in two pieces, I guess, to maybe save a few bucks or whatever. So ultimately I'm probably just gonna use the front section and carry on. Uh, this side isn't tennis, so it's kind of hard to lay down, but I think it'll be pretty nice. I'll be able to join it right in the middle under all this uh, trim. So that'll hide a bunch of body work. Once you get this piece out, this will kind of fit where it's gonna be. Obviously we'll line it up in the trunk. It's not set up properly. Either trunk molding and then alongside here that'll fit in kind of like that this will give us our little I assume this is the indent where we're gonna put the trim with all the snaps for the convertible kind of cover and whatnot I assume I don't know I guess we'll figure it out but that'll be nice you know I guess all this stuff could have been made I wasn't too sure on uh, ultimately on the, the distances and stuff like that and I kind of fall in love with this thing I'm not gonna lie I do want it to be kind of as close to a convertible as possible uh, so at the end of the day, this will have the convertible sheet metal in the proper space and all that stuff. So down the road, if I come up with enough money, I can actually put a proper convertible top mechanism and all that in there and it will fit just like factory. factory verbal sheet metal actually Danny came out and she called it factory we do a lot of factory around here so there you go um I think I might slice this and I actually put these part of the doors or the whatever quarter sections at this point so they can maybe come on and off with the door I'll think about that overnight decide what I want to do tomorrow I'm gonna try and do rockers I'm not gonna lie I actually haven't been on the garage for about four days in a row and I was wrestling that uh, frame around under this thing in the last video pulled something in my uh, stomach there and I've like an old man barely able to move the last few days today's been the first day I felt okay and I'm just kind of working at you know waist tight or whatever so I want to do the rockers because that's where all the strength will be see how that goes tomorrow 
AB trunk pan or uh, or the quarter because I can lift it up and be easy on my old self. But uh, yeah, look at that. Man, that looks good. Oh, it's money well spent, but sure is money spent. It'd look way better with the deck lid on. Uh, this deck lid's hammered. I think I have another one in the basement that's in better shape. So I might try and drag that out and, and uh, test fit it on there. See what she looks like and go from there. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching as always. Let me know what you think of it. I'm loving the comments. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's a convertible. Convertible. It's what I can afford. I'm so stoked to drive this thing. So uh, I think I should be able to bang out a couple videos pretty quick as long as my body holds up. But uh, one video of rockers, one video of quarter panel welded on. And then I'm still waiting on the GD floor. Once I get the floor in, then I mean, it uh, shouldn't be too much work because the front ends, brand new brakes, you know, all that kind of junk. Amazon showed up today with all the brake lines and everything. Well, a roll of brake line, which I'll make work. We got miscellaneous motors and transmissions we're going to have to figure out. I'm sure the drive shaft. And then I just got to deal with the rock auto order for some rear brakes and kind of odds and ends. Got a wiring harness for it. I mean, there's still lots and lots and lots and lots and lots to do. But uh, a ride around the block, I don't think, is that far in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Okay. Motor time. I got a pretty level, or pretty uh, side, side level, front to back. I got tilty. And I'm hoping it'll go. In. Unfortunately, we're on the low side of the garage for drainage, but. It really works against you and uh, kind of wrestle around whatever five or six hundred pounds with a small block Chevy and transmission. But luckily, I'm super strong. Okay. Okay, front clip is on, it's bolted on, somewhat, we just got a couple paint sticks sitting in the front there because I haven't found the little spacers, but we got it bolted at the uh, at the top and the bottom, so that'll give a little more sturdiness once you bolt it to the front there, it really gives it well, all the strength. Now let's say it together, so the doors open and close, oh yeah, so we're good there, I still gotta get this uh, the latch on that, anyways. It's all together. It looks friggin' fantastic. I oiled up the hood hinges because they were seized. Hope we can get those moving and the springs are off of it. I'm fighting out what I want to do because I don't have a driver's side fender. I do have a passenger side fender, but it's rotted at the bottom where this one isn't terrible and good there. So I might, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Anyways. Oh, hi there. Um, so today we're going to be installing some uh, quarter panel patch panels. Oh, Dan here, to use beach up. He's supposed to say that. So, this car, on, we're going to do it differently on this side than we are on the other side. But uh, this side we're using uh, some replacement panels. The reason being, the car was obvious, I mean this thing was an absolute wreck at, uh, at some point in its life. Parts car. It had moved around in the yard with a loader or something like that. And everything has just been all kind of mangled. So, uh, this section here, the dog leg, and into the rocker, I've got the right angle here, not but it's completely missing. There's literally just the door there. It's supposed to have a, a section that follows it. Being a parts car, I'm sure someone chopped that out. The dog legs uh, rot out on the on four door Tri 5 Chevys. If you guys are Tri 5 guys, you know they all rot out. So, if this one was decent, they probably got uh, snaked. Back here. This whole fender lip is all bent and rolled, and it's rotted through both sides of it. It's got like a little pinch around. And then back here, it's actually not bad for rust, but it's twisted seven ways from Sunday there. So, 
I, I decided to bite the bullet and I bought proper panels. So I thought in this video I'd show you how I'm going to put them on. Now this is not an instructional video. This is how to butcher some panels on your hot rod. I put the trim on. Again, four-door trim. No one's really a fan, a fan. I get it. We can see the gap. We'll work on that. Um, you know, it's a little long for the trim, but does the thing. Does the trick. So we have just a few little spots there. We have to just kind of bodywork a little. Once it's all welded in, the trim might not hide at all, but pretty close. All down here will be fine. Obviously, down here we gotta weld that and bodywork that. The only real spot. Is where it kind of like these panels didn't quite join so right here i'll have to fill that you know from there to there be weld grind and a little bit of body work the rest of it i shouldn't have touched much and it's all right in this uh, little seam but uh, i don't know i think it looks pretty good maybe a little bit more welding and grinding but now uh, that's the part i kept giving her on uh, after the camera died but if you look down it not all wavy or nothing like that. Turned out pretty good. The back worked out really good because the, the trim gets real fat there. So it basically hit almost all of it. There you go. Well, the back, so it's all secured. That's how tri-fives are. Not a lot of stir, uh, structure to them. On the inside where the wheel uh, well would be, or the tub, what do you want to call it? It's just like got a rubber, or I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I think it's rubber, I guess. Uh, a little bumper that goes against it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's where I'm gonna with this video. You know, I know the old Will It Runs are, are all over YouTube and they just absolutely killed me. I love watching them myself, but uh, this is a Will It Drag It Home, chop all the doors out of it, chop the roof off, make it into a convertible, weld in floor pans, redo all the suspension, change the chassis, uh, rebuild the front end, all new brakes, put in a known good motor and transmission, and still have it run. That's pretty impressive, right? So we're going to key it, and then uh, I'm going to bump start it with the Merlematic. Okay, so it's like bodywork 101. I am, uh, I don't even think I passed 101. I sure didn't pass 201 and bodywork AP or whatever, I'm not good at that. But the basics I kind of know. So this is the kind of tools and, and stuff I've collected I'm going to use. Uh, I actually just bought a brand new grinder. Check this out, brushless. Batteries supposed to last long. So thanks you guys for watching because you bought this. If you want to borrow it, let me know. 
Um, so anyways, I use these uh, flap discs all the time. This is 40 and 80 grit they come in. So I still got some, uh, that's what I used to grind all the weld down. So I got that to do, like up in here, I really haven't done anything. Still full blown welds. So you gotta do that. A little bit of hammer and dolly work to get that kind of taken care of. Um, in the past I have, over the welds, put fiberglass and stuff down. I'm not doing that this time or whatever. I'm just gonna use some body filler. So I got two different kinds of body filler. We got the main stuff, and this is like the fine glaze, or which I don't think we're gonna use any of that. That's for like finish work. Now body filler, Bondo, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Bondo is like a name brand. It's like Kleenex to tissue paper. So whatever. I I actually find the Bondo brand kind of it dries real hard. And it's paint and sand. This stuff is well Rondex. That's our local body shop brand. I think it's like Evercoat equivalent to or Everclear. I don't know. But I'm a believer in the expensive stuff. It sands off the best. And uh, the cheap gallon here, Canadian, is like 35 bucks and the expensive is like 55 bucks. And you save more than $25 worth of sanding, in my mind. So we got that. A couple of squeegees. We'll squeegee that around. I actually just bought this. It's kind of cool. So I typically when I'm mixing body filler, you guys for sure let me know I'd use like that box and I just schmuck a bunch on and have a little dirt in it and then kind of go on this is supposed to be like you put it on and then you just uh, rip the sheet off and you have a brand new one 100 sheets I don't know it was on sale so I bought it we'll try that um, these are all my blocks we're gonna use so this is the big one I love this big Dura block so should be good I got teardrop tape and the square round oh, a couple of smaller ones like that flatting out so the trick with body work well what i do with body work is it just it doesn't have to be exactly dead straight or whatever as long as it's true you know what i mean so your eyes not drawn to it being all wavy so when you see people like running a little palm sander on something that's going to create all sorts of waves and stuff like that and at ed speed shop here <clears throat> we have nothing but the best but uh so that'll flatten it out the sandpaper i always buy is this stuff take care of my stuff here this is actually super expensive uh it's 3m cubitron cubitron i don't know it's really good it doesn't plug up it's uh velcro back everything works on this kind of go from there uh actually in the truck i got mers big sander which i think it's a seven inch random orbital so i'll use that as well but for right now we're gonna get the grinder out we're gonna get a few spots kind of dialed together that i might not have taken care of like in here they're still weld and whatnot so we'll get that then we'll start filling it up with filler i don't know how much i'm gonna get done it is saturday on saturdays we go live so i got about an hour and a half to uh make a hell of a mess in here before we sit in a bunch of uh body filler dust sounds like fun eh the other thing is i bought a new car and i'm picking it up tomorrow so we're starting a video today tomorrow we're gonna be screwing on getting a car and then i think i'll be excited about working on that car so honestly, <clears throat> you're probably gonna see the car video before you see this video, because I'll work on this for an hour and then be 100% done with it, because now this is boring. We've chopped the roof off and now we're doing sanding. This is like the hardest for me to get motivated, is doing body work. And the best part is, I'm sure everyone's like, paint it nice, it's a nice car, I get it. I hear ya, probably not happening. I hate doing body work, it's slow moving, and uh, <clears throat> you know the only thing worse than doing body work? is watching me do body work for like seven episodes. But uh, we'll set the time-lapse camera up, I'll start doing some grinding and schmucking and uh, probably give up. And I think I want chicken fingers for dinner tonight, so it's a big plan. All right, let's get after it.
keep coming to this side for a little motivation. So I'm giving her on the other side, did two or three coats, I'm not really too sure, it's too dark out. It's getting late, but it's uh, kind of flattened out in 100, I think it was 100, 80. Not bad. Um, the next thing I did, I ground down just a little bit and I put some filler in here. I'm just going to flatten this out and I think I'm going to hit the whole, the deck lid, the back and the side here in 180 or 200 or I did on the other side. Get this down to bare metal, get this a little bit of surface rust off. Deck lid should come, uh, come out pretty easy. One little spot down there, I got a, I don't know, it's just kind of rough. Get that dialed through this whole <clears throat> quarter panel. And then I think I'm just going to fog, I only have a couple cans of primer. I'm going to get the bare metal done and put a couple of coats wherever I have just on the filler. The filler just soaks up the primer, so we'll do that. I guess we're going to edit tonight, but I'm going to keep giving her. Tomorrow I'm going to see if I can get the door jams and doors dialed together. And the fenders really don't need much, they need two little patches well at the bottom. I'll probably just do that real quick, but like this fender pretty much scuff and shoot. The cowl, same thing, it's got like moss, gotta clean that off. I can do that. I'll probably just paint kinda here down anyways, this is irrelevant. And everything else I'll mask off. The hood, same thing, I'll actually, I'll pull out the uh, the bullets I just had in there. It already has the trim off the front. Scuff and shoot that. So, I'm gonna finish doing the bodywork. If I can't finish tomorrow, it might be one long night till like, you know, midnight tomorrow. Or maybe the day after, we'll have her all prepped, sanded, and then the next video we'll prime it. I'm gonna see if I can get some, like a gallon, a proper uh, primer. The door jams will take a little bit, that's what's gonna slow me up. Um, this door still hasn't even made closed properly yet. So I gotta get some more parts. I mean, door handles and all that, I just don't have. So, But, seeing the other side, primed, that little cover on, man, this thing is cool. So, We'll get this dialed together, we'll get it painted up, and then I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so this side has well, a couple of coats that have dried. So you get the vibe, right? Uh, I jammed the other side. I didn't do any filming because it was more of the same. Put filler on, sand it off. Put filler on, sand it off. This door is so beat. It's unbelievable. So I just literally just painted this. Um, that's where we're going to leave this video. We're gonna let this dry for a little bit while I uh, go up some supper. It's nighttime. I don't know if I'm gonna be up to like one o'clock in the morning painting or if I'm just gonna call it, we'll see. I would like to put some paint on this thing, but uh, I still feel like it's a lot to do yet tonight. It's already 10 o'clock, so we'll see how the night goes. But I was thinking about this. So Murr goes away all winter and he has a little garage. Well, he's got a big garage, but maybe this could live there when he's gone and I could work on it here and there and uh, maybe paint it properly, do the bodywork on it over the winter, just take my time, go over, you know, once or twice a week and block out a quarter, block out a door, do whatever I gotta do, and then pick a color and really, really paint something. The main reason I don't paint something, I know you guys are always paint it, paint it, paint it. It's time, location, I only have the one space currently. So if I'm gonna take a full month to paint this, well, unfortunately, all I'm gonna do for videos is like, Sanding a quarter panel, that's two days, and then it's the door, and then it's the fender, and then it's the hood, and then it's fitting the doors, and the deck lid, and all these little things, and I just think it'd be terrible watching. If it's terrible for me to do, it's gonna be terrible to watch. Anyways, that's really it for now. Uh, I'm gonna keep jamming, start the next video after supper here, or after my late night snacks, I wanna get back out here. But, uh, get cleaned up, get the primer mixed up, maybe lay down a couple of coats, and let her dry, or, Wait till tomorrow. I'm thinking that might be what happens. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below. Uh, leave a comment. All those things really appreciate it. And I will uh, well, see you when we're painting. Man, it looks like a real convertible. Look at that dent. You see the dent in the primer. <laughs> so I think we're gonna mix it. Now we can put some in. I guess add. What we do that? Four to one. So, this stuff.
It's supposed to you can paint it right out of the can, it says. <laughs> it's not my night, but uh, this is just acetone. Supposed to thin it out a little. So it comes out of the gun nice. Um, I'm just going to reduce the pressure on the gun. I don't know, like 40 pounds or something like that. I don't know what this thing's set to. But We'll mix this up. Once you get it mixed, I'll just show you. I'll do a couple of little fan passes on the practice door. I am by no means a painter, so here that might not. Oh, this stuff really doesn't stick. Crazy thick. You like them thick? Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, So I mean, you're just gonna we're gonna mix this up. We're gonna spray it. If it comes out kind of, well, feels like it's too thick, a little globby. I'll just add a little more acetone to it. Basically, it's like just thinner. Basically, it's fence paint. So whatever. Hopefully, we got. Oh, you can show them the mask job we did. Pretty good, eh? Literally just drape that over there. Pretty, pretty haphazard, I think it's called. But. If we're honest, this whole operation's a little haphazard. <laughs> a little. Whatever, when you're changing a four door into a convertible in the middle of the night. These things happen. These things happen. I, I can't help you search for any more things. <laughs> I think we have everything. Almost everything. What do I have this set to? Yeah, so I got set to 40 psi. Must be what I want. Now, the gun here. One is just air, and the other one just drops the paint in. It's got two little. Um, nozzles. I believe this just widens the fan and that allows more paint in. I think. Well, that's never a good sign. <laughs> Obviously that's dirty. Look, it looks clean. What the heck I even painted last time? Oh, yeah. There we go. A little piece of schmutz in there. That'll for sure not come back to bite us in the ass. This is really not going well. Huh? Perfect. So, there we go. So you can kind of see if you go tight, it makes a little small one. And you can span her out. So it's bigger. That seems alright. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, wipe down the bottom of the car real quick for my get some water on it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, we'll do a couple passes and then I'll set you up on the camera and we'll finish it off. But uh, start in the middle, work your way back, top to the bottom, I don't know. There's any rhyme or reason to it. Can but... you do me a favor first? Huh? Can you say, uh, Luke, I'm the father?
It's been a couple of days. The paint is solid. We haven't done a whole lot. I slapped on these top two uh, trim pieces, just goes out here. Uh, BS it with Mer. I got the top tonneau kind of set there. You know, obviously, this is what I'm going to do with it. I uh, came with these little snaps and stuff, so we got to make our own little uh, you know, clamps that go through it, I guess, or snaps. I got to get the uh, male part of it from like a fabric store or Home Depot or something like that. But I want to put the side trim on, so this side trim will go on real easy. I might have to drill a couple holes or slot a few things. But I've already had it on once. Get both of those on. Um, it was missing a bunch of this stuff. I might have some in the basement. I had spares on Danny's car. I like to get that on there. I think I have some tail light pieces. And then the bumper is just sitting in the pile of junk. So I get all that dialed together. I might run out and get those snaps actually because I would like to put that on. Uh, I want to kind of start cleaning everything out of here. So get side trim on, see what I need. I don't have the side trim for the front, so I think I'm just going to stop at the back section. Um, I want to start putting this stuff, fitting it, because I'll do a little cutting and trimming to make it all work. Uh, obviously four-door, two-door stuff. Take what I have off the two doors, slice, and then, you know, whatever I gotta do, put in the windows. I actually found another window a guy has, might run out and get that. So, that's what we're doing in this video. Get as much as I can on. Uh, get the rockets in, or bullets, whatever you wanna call them. I have another grill. It's on the bumper in. I think I have a hood bar. Uh, I might just put the hood on proper, get Murr over here to help me <clears throat> put the hinges on and get it bolted down. But uh, it looks like a car. This red oxide, it sure looks brown. But, uh, what are you going to say? Red oxide. Red-ish. So we'll set the camera up. We'll start slamming the side together. It'll look a lot cooler. It's the same color I had before when I showed just the back. And uh, once you get a little chrome on it, it sure liven this hot rod right up. So Mer stopped by, I put the hood on. Look how freaking good this thing looks. Um, I put on a couple of brows, these are all beat to shit. Uh, we got our piece on and we put new studs in, so that was good. I took the trim off the other uh, fender, it is woo, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, yeah, always, always glad to have Mer over. So wrestling uh, myself, which I've done a lot, it seems like lately, and it's making me tired. Anyways, I want to work on the windshield here, so this thing came with a whole lot of nothing. The windshield smashed. I'm having trouble finding a hard top windshield right now, so I tucked it in there. We're going to pretend it's good. It's on the driver's side, so it should be okay. This is all stuff I have collected over the years um, from different cars. So this is sedan stuff. I don't know if it's any different than hard top. <clears throat> We'll see. I think it should all kind of yeah, somewhat fit together. I'm missing some little clips and stuff that may not be perfect. The issue I'm having is I'm missing this top piece. Uh, I thought that hard tops were unique, but this is some sedan stuff I have. So I thought a hard top window was shorter, but well, maybe it is. I'll have to trim it a little bit, but it should fit. The other issue, see this is a little hook and loop. This piece is actually supposed to be in the window beforehand. So, see if we can lube her up and kind of knock it in. Then it's just held in there and then the rubber pressure holds it. And then you put this piece kind of on. And this, I'm missing the little backing piece, but it has a screw in the back and this just kind of slides over and there's a same thing in the center, little slide piece, they'll slide all over. And then there's a couple of holes there. For this little piece, this is the wrong side, but I grab it for this piece and slide on here. And that'll hold the trim together on the window. So I think we'll do that. On the next video, I'm gonna start messing around with the uh, roof. I got an idea as to how I wanna make it look a little more convertibly. Convertibly. So we'll get that done, then We'll finish up. Oh, I put door handles on. Ooh, ah. Uh, I just found a set in the junk pile. I don't even know what they're off of. Well, try five. I don't know what one. We'll make this thing fit. We'll put on the front trim. I did find another one of these. So we can do both sides. This might be a little bit of cutting and welding to the old piece, but get that on and screw it on. 
Then all I'm really missing is the trim around the window, which isn't really too bad. And this trim, I'm gonna put these on, I'm just gonna glue them in because all the studs broke off the back. Once we get that done, I wanna back it outside, look at the sun. So let's try and get this window together real quick. Yeah? Sounds like a fun time. Well, there it is. Sun's just going down. A little over 30 days, and this thing went from a four door hard top to a two door roadster. Still needs lots of work, but the real hard, hard stuff is done. It's hard to imagine that this has new front clip, different doors, rear quarter section, deck lid, floor pan, full chassis swap, different rear end. Different front end, disc brake upgrade, motor trans in it, custom made drive shaft, oh yeah, rockers. It's uh it's unbelievable to think how much work you can get done. I think this is where I'm gonna leave it. We got a lot done. Painted her up, got her a uh, bunch of trim on. That was a lot of screwing around all the trim actually, I gotta say. I'm leaving it on the high note right now. I'm gonna put this car back in the garage and deal with it tomorrow. On a new video, I think I wanna tackle the roof, so that's or the Windshield frame, whatever we're going to call it. That's from Liam for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you wouldn't mind subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. Tell all your friends about this, because let's be honest. This is quality entertainment we got here. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is in a couple of days. What's going on, guys? It's uh, It's been a couple of days. I did a little bit of work, but I wasn't really filming. Uh, we got the taillights all in, 100% dialing. That's where we left it there. Uh, I literally just drilled a hole in the old uh, beat up license plate light and put like a universal one in just so it has something which works fine. Wired that all up so that's all in. These are now bolted in. Um, no, let's skip to the front. I went through my pile of, well, headlight buckets and trim rings and whatever. I got it all together. This one is still a little loose. I got to get in there and mess with it. What I ended up doing, because the little headlight, whatever, adjuster piece, these, ugh. so these are specific to the buckets, and the buckets are specific to the car, because of the way the trim goes on. So, I think a 5 and 6 might be the same, but I'm not sure. And 57 is different just because the full fender is a completely different shape and the way that the, uh, the brow is held on, it's got four mounts. So it has to have those four standoffs, or three standoffs, sorry. The fourth is actually on the vent. This is a 57 one. You can see there's the standoffs for it. The problem with the 57, they really stick out here, really bulbous versus... Uh, this one's different, see it just has the mount on the bottom. This is a 55. So I think 55 clips on the top and screws on the bottom, or one or the other. But anyways, you can see how much deeper it is than a 57. So, where did I put the things? These are obviously deeper for a 5 and a 7. 5 and 6, I guess, maybe? So they fit in proper. This might not be the right one. So I took some, I cut the bottom of the bucket off. And made my own that fit so it works um we have all the lights working i guess i can show you that it's like a little show and tell thing here uh, there's the ignition put that on turn that on oh i put a universal headlight switch in oh the a bit better must have a dead battery. This was working. Oh, it was a loose battery. So we have headlights, we have turn signals. I didn't have uh, amber, I just had a couple 1157 clear, so I'll have to change that. In the front, I did the same thing. I drilled out the uh, the factory bar and put in those snap ones with the, with the ground, which I just like those. So that worked out pretty good. Um, yeah, then. I had that done, so I started working on the interior. So I mean, I didn't film that because I thought, eh, it's the same as doing the back, who cares? Then I got in here, and I literally just started cleaning up the wiring harness. So I got it all kind of together, 
it was fine. I, I held it up in here, some of the factory uh, clamps and stuff down here. This is all the extra we're not going to use, but we may steal some 12 volts. This is the fan. I got to hook that up and everything's sticking through here. It's going to go with a cluster. Uh, I don't know if I showed you or not, but I mounted it with a muffler clamp. I welded that on there. Now, this thing didn't have a cluster when I got it. I thought I had a spare, which I do, which is a little beat up. So I need a new Speedo, but everything else is there. I have all the lights and stuff that'll make it work. I actually even had a uh, speedometer cable. I was gonna go like full OEM. So that's not gonna work, but well, I'm putting it in also like a GPS Speedo. I actually have one that's put in there for the time being. Uh, pretty simple to wire it up. The only issue I'm going to run into now, the way a 57 goes, it has this big kind of whatever trim piece just to cover the column, but because now I have a tilt column and I suck the column in a fair bit. And here's my thinking. I wanted a seat in the factory location so there was some room in the back seat. I typically push it back, but every inch you push back, you lose in the back. So this way here at the tilt, I can have it up all the way back and, and fit a smaller wheel. I have the factory wheel, a smaller wheel fit and I can actually drive it by pushing the column further away from myself. That in turn is now gonna screw that up. I didn't think that all the way through. So I will have to trim this, which I mean, I'm not really too, too caring too much about it. But that's what we're gonna work on now. Get that in, get this wired up. I think I have a bunch of lights. So signal lights, the uh, fuel gauge, the gen light, and I think it has the indicator, high, low indicators, yeah, right there. So that's what we'll get going right now. And otherwise I just cleaned it up. Oh, seat cover. Yeah, that seat's bolted in. We're really getting there. I messed with the trim a little bit. I had to, I put the, I put some uh, wire to some handles. So the handles work on the inside. I had a handle for that side. I had a vice grip for this side, but uh, they work. So yeah, we'll carry on in there. And I'd like to get that kind of together. Then we're gonna have to rob some parts Probably off the, the Black Widow, unfortunately, just for the time being, I need trunk latch, hood latch, and I think that's it. I stole the, the taillight covers, I stole the headlight covers, I stole a bunch of stuff off this car. Not that I need it right this second, and ultimately, when this car comes off the road, the other car will be going on the road, so let's do the old switcheroo, and we'll go from there. Unfortunately, lenses and stuff are all in back order, which is a pain, but uh, we'll track them down. Okay. Shell backed out, I cleaned the window up best I could. She's still not great. Someone put a lot of welding sparks in that sucker. Hood's latched who. down. What's that? I wonder who. Yeah, I wonder who. Um, what else did I do out here? Clean that up, check the fluids. I think it's all these other oil changes. There might be a little bit of water in that motor still from when it was stored in properly. Shocker. We got paper towel, fire extinguisher, hammer, flathead screwdriver. Patience? I think that's all we really need. I think there's gas in it. I put a jerry can in. See if I have another one. I st oh, I stole the rad cap off the uh, big block. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're gonna give her. At least we'll look good broken down on this thing, right? We're just gonna take her down the street. I wouldn't. Uh, Danny can push it back if we have to. Man, this is a look good looking car. I really hope the trim doesn't all fall off because I think it's just all glued on in certain spots. But all right, let's give her. <laughs> well, we're good. Now the back clean so far. Got a few rattles. The gas pedal stiff. First gear. Where's that second gear? Second gear. I'm not showing if there's any linkage or anything hooked up to this thing. Oh yeah, third gear. Actually, this column's nice. I got it up. I feel like a school bus driver. Little Bernie. It's really not too bad. It smells like burning oil is what it smells like. It's got a lot of oil pressure. We got brakes. I think we got signals. This thing is nice. No, I'm gonna get some uh, so we gotta put a few more miles on it. The steering wheel's crooked. Um you gotta get proper insurance on it. Uh, there, ain't, there ain't much right now. Honestly, it actually doesn't rattle that bad. Like the dash and stuff is rattling, but nothing's fucked up there. I don't know. 
I think it's a pretty good car. What do you think, yeah? It's excellent. I love it. You gotta deal with the back, uh, whatever. It's not held down any which way. I'm sure it'll blow away on the highway, but. This is awesome. It's cool, man. <laughs> I love this.